banking systems have significantly contributed to the long-term growth success in the region. But there is equally strong evidence that they have been a source of risk in crises. The recent crisis in most of the countries of the EBRD region was both triggered and facilitated by financial globalization. The shocks that gave rise to these crises came from abroad and through drying up financial flows they reached our region. At the same time, financial globalization allowed the overborrowing that made our economies so vulnerable to this reversal of fortune. Weighing the balance of rapid growth and crises, we have argued in our 2009 transition report that reversing financial integration would be both unfeasible and unwise. At the same time, it is imperative that the risks arising from this integration be reduced. In the meantime, we have gained a much better understanding of what this risk reduction agenda may mean in practice, including the role for local financial development. And we have started putting these insights into practice, both in our policy work and in our operations. Our central insight is that financial globalization can be made safer without losing its benefits for growth. This requires that financial globalization is accompanied by a certain kind of domestic financial development. This, it seems to me, is also a central tenet of the G20 agenda as developed by the Korean presidency last year and as we just heard the French presidency this year. As such, I may be preaching to the converted today, but if you step back for a moment, the argument is not so obvious. Financial development is often identified with aggregate financial deepening measured by the quantity of money or credit in relation to GDP. But overborrowing means precisely that credit stocks were too high. So how is it possible that financial development might be a cure for the risks of financial globalization rather than its domestic co-conspirator? The answer lies in part in the distinction between overborrowing in a boom and financial deepening as a structural phenomenon. And in part it has to do with the fact that by domestic financial development we have a particular microeconomic and institutional vision for the financial sector in mind rather than just the volume of credit. Let me give some examples which support the idea that the right kind of domestic financial development is a risk mitigant. I try to draw particularly on work by those present at this conference, which turns out not to be difficult because this group today draws many of the foremost experts in the area. First, taking into account differences in macroeconomic fundamentals across countries, there is clear evidence that financially more developed countries suffered smaller output declines in 2009 than less developed countries. Moreover, ongoing work at the IMF shows that domestic financial development tends to mitigate external imbalances and hence a key macroeconomic source of vulnerability. Secondly, while there is a large body of evidence showing that foreign-owned banks help to transmit the crisis across border, it is also increasingly clear that at the core of the issue was not 
foreign ownership per se, but their reliance on foreign funding from their parents and others. Conversely, local ownership will not help you in a global crisis if local banks fund themselves largely on international markets, as Kazakhstan painfully experienced during the crisis. What really matters for stability is local funding, not local ownership. Finally, countries whose debt, both private and public, is denominated in domestic currency are far less susceptible to external shocks and the exchange rate pressures that go with them than countries that are highly dollarized or euroized. This is not a new insight, but one that was driven home by the crisis when dollarized countries in our region went through painful domestic adjustment and in many cases required large-scale international support to keep their exchange rates stable in the face of large foreign-denominated debt. In sum, international financial integration is good, but its risks must be mitigated by what one might call local financial content, local currency, local deposit bases, and local capital markets. To be sure, while this principle is clear and strong, acting on it is anything but simple. Local content is not something that can be easily legislated or regulated. The barriers to local financial development are complex and need to be clearly understood. And even when we do have a good conceptual grasp of the obstacles, Removing them can be tricky, involving difficult technical issues and problems of sequencing. At the EBRD, we try to approach these problems in an interdisciplinary fashion, involving bankers, economists, finance experts, and lawyers. We have also partnered with the IMF and World Bank to create the Local Currency and Local Capital Markets Initiative, which we launched at our annual meeting in Zagreb last year. Since then, we've made significant progress in understanding what stands in the way to local currency use and local capital market development. <coughs> 